Just four months after the groundbreaking launch of the first Starship, SpaceX is already preparing for another significant step in their remarkable journey. Their Starship is set to embark on its second orbital flight test in a matter of weeks. The excitement is palpable. After its recent return to the production site, the rapid pace of activities at SpaceX's Starbase was a sight to behold. In less than six hours from its trip commencement from the Mega Bay, Booster 9, a behemoth in the world of rockets, was elegantly lifted and positioned onto the orbital launch mount, all thanks to the monstrous Megazilla crane. In an official statement on Twitter, SpaceX confirmed the transportation of Super Heavy Booster 9 back to the orbital launch pad. This is significant since it marks Booster 9's potential final rollout for pre-launch endeavors. Familiarity might breed contempt, but not in the world of rockets. Though the launch pad has had Booster 9's company before, this occasion has a celebratory feel to it, akin to a king returning to his throne. Given SpaceX's impressive track record and the Falcon 9's success, some are even drawing connections to the number 9, a number often considered lucky in various cultures, as they eagerly await the next big launch, Booster 9. To provide more context on Booster 9's preparations, before any rocket takes its journey to space, it undergoes a series of rigorous tests to ensure its readiness. In the case of Booster 9, this meant multiple cryogenic proof tests. These tests involve exposing the rocket to the ultra-cold temperatures it would encounter in space and checking for any weaknesses or potential issues. Within the last month, Booster 9 went through two standard cryogenic proof tests and followed them up with an even more in-depth version of the same test, ensuring that it can withstand the harsh conditions of space. But that's not all. The rocket also experienced its inaugural spin prime and static fire testing. To break that down, during the static fire test, Booster 9 showcased a new safety system called the Deluge system. However, it wasn't entirely smooth sailing. An unforeseen event occurred during the test. Four of the rocket's engines shut down earlier than expected. While this might sound alarming, the engineers at SpaceX deemed the event manageable. The engines of Booster 9 have become a subject of intrigue and curiosity. Their concealed nature has prompted many to wonder about the state of these engines, especially after the early shutoff incident during static fire testing. Rocket engines, particularly ones as robust and powerful as those on board Booster 9, are very sensitive. They can be easily affected by external factors like moisture and dust. Now, it's interesting to note that, Unlike many other aerospace companies that meticulously assemble rockets in controlled indoor environments known as clean rooms, SpaceX takes a distinctly different path. They assemble the Starship, including Booster 9, outdoors. And not just that, during transportation phases, the massive Starship even travels across unpaved roads, kicking up dust and exposing it to a range of environmental factors. Given this open-air approach to assembly and transportation, it is natural for SpaceX to provide their rocket engines with an extra layer of protection. The covers or shields in place are more akin to protective gear, ensuring the engines remain unaffected by any debris. Booster 9 now stands upon the orbital launch mount. It's poised to undergo another static fire test, which is one of the final assessments before the eagerly anticipated launch. This test is crucial as it determines the rocket's readiness. Booster 9's 33 Raptor version 2 engines will power up for the static fire test, simulating a launch. To fuel these engines, a specific kind of propellant is used. It's a mixture of two substances, liquid oxygen and liquid methane. Both these substances are extremely cold and need to be handled with care. History informs us that Booster 7 only underwent one 33-engine static fire test. Space enthusiasts anticipate a similar path for Booster 9. If the upcoming static fire test yields positive results, the next step involves stacking the ship. This will be vital for adjusting with the ship's quick disconnect, which has been elevated on the tower, considering the additional height provided by the installation of the hot staging ring. This hot staging ring introduces a fascinating element to the Starship's journey. Simply put, hot staging involves igniting the engines of the upper stage of a rocket while the lower stage is still attached and its engines are running. The purpose? To ensure a seamless transition between the two stages in mid-flight, eliminating any potential downtime or disruption which could hinder the rocket's trajectory or momentum. 
The roots of this technique can be traced back to the era of Soviet rockets. In the context of the Starship, the hot staging ring is instrumental in achieving this mid-flight transition. As the Starship ascends, there's a pivotal moment when the ship has to separate from its booster. This is where the hot staging ring comes into play. It aids the Starship's Raptor engines to ignite and push the ship forward, even while the booster's engines are still in operation. This innovative mechanism is a significant upgrade from previous, more complex separation methods. Despite all the advancements and preparations, a cloud of uncertainty overshadows the time frame for the orbital flight attempt. Central to this uncertainty is the pending launch license. Surprisingly, it was only recently that SpaceX submitted a detailed report to the Federal Aviation Administration regarding their orbital Starship launch in April. This launch test encountered its fair share of challenges. Beyond the evident launch failure, the rocket's emergency destruction system did not operate as intended. This malfunction resulted in extensive damage to the launch pad, attributed to the sheer power of the 33 roaring rocket engines. The aftermath of this event was significant, with nearby communities being showered with rock debris and experiencing a sandstorm, effects felt miles away from the launch site. Musk was still very confident, stating that a second attempt could be on the horizon within eight weeks of the first. However, four months have since passed, and the spotlight is now on SpaceX's ongoing endeavors to secure their launch license anew from the FAA. The path forward is clear. The report submitted by SpaceX needs to be both comprehensive and convincing. It is very important for the company to provide concrete evidence that they've not only pinpointed the root causes of the initial launch's setbacks, but have also instituted measures to prevent such incidents in future endeavors. Only with the FAA's approval and assurance that all concerns have been addressed can SpaceX proceed with its ambitious spaceflight goals. The good news is, if things go smoothly with the FAA and they grant the license soon, we could see this launch by the end of the month. That's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more similar content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.